So, welcome to another session on pediatric surgery. Today, we will be discussing about a topic which you might have come across in the adult population as well, but its incidence is significantly higher in the children. In children. So, this particular topic is mesenteric anomentalsis. So, mesenteric anomentalsis have an incidence of 1 lakh, 1 in 1 lakh in general population and it has a significantly higher incidence as I mentioned earlier of 1 in 20,000 among the pediatric population. One third of these of, of people who present with a mesenteric anomentalsis are less than 15 years of age and one fourth of the cases are less than 10 years of age. There seems to be a definite female predominance when compared to males with regard to a mental and mesenterixis. So, history. Let us now discuss the history behind mesenteric anomentalsis. So, one name which comes to which is the first person to actually describe a mesenteric cyst was Beneville, who was an anatomist and he described it by doing an autopsy on a child who died because of an intestinal obstruction possibly precipitated by this cystic lesion in the abdomen. Von Rokitansky described the first specific variant of a mesenteric cyst which is a chylolymphatic cyst. Gardner was the first person to describe an omental cyst and Tillow was the first person to do a successful surgical excision of an omental cyst. P.N. first person who said that a marsupialization can also be done for a mesenteric cyst. So, once we have completed the history, next comes the uh, what constitutes a mesenteric cyst. So, what is basically a mesenteric cyst and what is an omental cyst? So, a mesenteric cyst by definition, the term itself is self-explanatory. So, it is basically a cyst which arises from the leaves of the mesentery, lined by a single layer of endothelium containing fl clear fluid or fluid which might have occasional calcification. Omental cyst it has very similar characteristics to that of a mesenteric cyst. The only difference is that it seems to occur in the greater or the lesser omentum. So, since both of them can, are derivatives of lymphatics, Together, they can be termed to be cystic lymphatic malformations. So, why do such mesenteric coromental cysts occur? So, there were many theories which were proposed, like the failure of the embryonic lymphatics to join the venous system, deficiency of lymphovenous shunts in the perinodal tissue, failure of the leaves of the mesentery to fuse, creating a gap in which lymph accumulates, occult trauma or neoplasms. But the one which is, which is largely accepted was proposed by Gross. He postulated that maybe these omental and mesenteric cysts arise because of benign proliferation of ectopic lymphatics in the mesentery, which do not communicate with the normal lymphatic supply. So, next we come to the classification. There are many classifications for abdominal cysts which are available right now. So, let us go in the chronological order in which, were, in which they were proposed. So, the first classification is Beers and colleagues classification who classified it cysts based on the etiology. He, they, they divided it into embryology and developmental cysts, neoplastic cysts, traumatic cysts or infective cysts. So, as per this classification, omental cysts were initially classified as embryology and developmental cysts, omental and mesenteric cysts were initially classified as em under the terminology of embryology and developmental cysts. Subsequently, when Gross postulated that these occur because of a benign proliferation of lymphatics, it created a confusion of sorts because whether these can be classified under embryology and developmental cysts or should they be put under neoplastic cysts. <laughs>